also important to understand that there are other causes of dry cough, which uh, we have not covered so far. So pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, pulmonary embolism, pharyngitis, trachea bronchitis, early pneumonia, laryngitis, recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, or compression from other conditions, and then tracheal compression from either lymph nodes or superior vena cava obstruction will all cause dry cough. Okay. Uh, just a very quick overview on the management of cough due to asthma, COPD, GRD, drug-induced cough. How do you do that? So if the dry cough is because of upper airways cough syndrome, UACS, usually caused by allergic rhinitis. What is the best treatment for allergic rhinitis? Is it giving the patient first generation antihistamines? Is it giving the patient second generation antihistamines? Is it giving the patient anti-leukotrienes or intranasal steroids or a combination of anti-leukotrienes plus antihistamines or a combination of intranasal steroids plus antihistamines or a combination or, or allergen immunotherapy or intranasal decongestants? Which is the best treatment for allergic rhinitis? Answer this question in your mind because I'll tell you the correct answer. Is it the first generation antihistamines? No. Intranasal corticosteroids is the correct answer. First generation antihistamines should never be given. Second generation antihistamines only in mild or in cases of mild intermittent symptoms and that too only for 7 to 10 days. Not more than 10 days. I see a lot of patients get second generation antihistamines for weeks. That is the wrong treatment. Okay. Antileukotrines only as an add-on treatment. This is the ideal treatment of choice for patients with allergic rhinitis. What is it? Intranasal corticosteroids. A combination of anti-leukotrines and antihistamines is not a good choice. I know there are lots of these drugs in the market. Many, many pharmaceutical companies will come to you with this combination. It is not a good choice. Combination of intranasal steroids and antihistamines, yes. Only if it is severe allergic rhinitis and that too for a short duration. Allergen immunotherapy rarely uh, is useful unless it's, uh, unless it's allergic rhinitis caused by only one allergen, then it can be useful. Uh, Intranasal decongestants only as a reliever medication for not more than five to seven days. So this is the treatment for mm -hmm. allergic rhinitis. So upper airway cough syndrome, uh, this is for non-allergic rhinitis patients and post-nasal drip, first generation antihistamines and decongestants uh, the first generation antihistamines can be given only for a short period of time. Decongestants for a short period of time. If there's a family history or a past history of atopy, then you give them intranasal corticosteroids. Okay, that is the treatment of choice for upper airway cough syndrome. Treatment of asthma, inhaled corticosteroid is the most important treatment for asthma. No patient of asthma must be denied an inhaled corticosteroid. If you're treating your asthma patient with only inhaled salbutamol, it is the wrong treatment. If you look at the latest guidelines from Global Initiative for Asthma, they say that no patient with asthma must be should be treated with only salbutamol. It causes worsening of the disease. You want to give relief to the patient? You give a combination of Inhaled corticosteroid plus salbutamol or inhaled corticosteroid plus formotron. Don't give salbutamol on its own. Earlier, we used to use a lot of salbutamol for treatment of asthma. That is now completely gone. The latest global initiative for asthma guidelines clearly say treatment of asthma with short-acting beta agonists like salbutamol should now be stopped. You must give them an inhaled corticosteroid. That's an important. Now, for ILD, I think it's important to refer the patient to a pulmonologist because a pulmonologist is the best person who will be able to find the underlying cause of the ILD and then treat the patient appropriately. Chronic hypersensitivity cough is also not very uncommon. And the treatment for that is with cough neuromodulatory agents. Now, what are the cough neuromodulatory agents? So the preferred ones are low dose morphine, five to 10 milligrams of morphine twice a day. 
And if the patient has no re response at all in two weeks, then stop it. Because then it's then you should not give for more than two weeks. Codeine is not recommended due to unpredicted response uh, due to variability in drug metabolism. So drug of choice is morphine. Second is codeine, but try to avoid. Gabapentin and pregabalin are also used. Uh, the response is slower, lower than what we find with morphine. And then many times you get these side effects like blurred vision, disorientation, dizziness, dry mouth. So you have to be very, very careful with.